What is up, Flutter devs? I'm going to port processing to Flutter. Now, some of you might be wondering what processing is. Allow me to quote their website. Processing is a flexible software sketchbook and a language for learning how to code within the context of the visual arts. Since 2001, processing has promoted software literacy within the visual arts and visual literacy within technology. There are tens of thousands of students, artists, designers, researchers, and hobbyists who use processing for learning and prototyping. So that's what it is at a very high level. At more of uh, an explicit or technical level, processing is essentially a code editor and a set of APIs that you can use in the code editor to do all sorts of interesting visual things. For example, with processing, you can easily paint shapes, colors, images, textures. You can do that in 2D and 3D. You can interact with the mouse. You can interact with the keyboard. You can even play sounds. I want to bring similar capabilities that are used in a similar way to Flutter. You might be wondering why. What's the benefit of this? Why bring similar APIs into Flutter? Well, I'm on a mission this year to try to get Flutter into institutional education. This means high schools, community colleges, and universities. And based on that initial introduction that I gave you, it's clear that there are already uh, instructors, whether we're talking about high school teachers, community college instructors, university instructors, there are already people in institutional education that use processing to teach programming or to teach the visual arts. I want to convince some of those instructors to use the Flutter version of processing instead. As I envision it, this will be the beginning of Flutter in the education space, within institutional education. My thesis, my hope, is that once Flutter gets a basic foothold in institutional education, it'll spread like wildfire. Dart is such a simple language, Flutter is such a powerful tool, that once students gain those abilities in one area, they will naturally want to use those abilities in other areas. And it will be to the benefit of the other instructors to use those tools because often what, as long as you can teach what you want to teach with the given language and tool, often what excites the students the most is going to be the best choice for the technology because they will engage, they care about it. And the unique thing about Flutter, this isn't just about getting Flutter into schools. The unique value proposition for Flutter within education is that Flutter is as good of a learning tool as it is a production development tool. And I'm not sure we can say that about anything else. Typically, if something is, if you can ship something to users with the technology, the technology is really cumbersome. It is not good for learning. It, it makes everything more difficult than it needs to be. On the other end, something that's simple enough to learn with is not nuanced enough to go to production. Flutter has somehow managed to, to be the best of both worlds. Obviously, we can ship Flutter to customers. A lot of us are doing this all the time. But also, there probably isn't a UI toolkit that's easier to learn than Flutter. Now, from a very specific API standpoint, you know, processing is probably easier to use, but that's kind of the point here is if we can create APIs that are remarkably similar to processing within the world of Flutter. You can keep the ease of those APIs, but you can invite the students into the broader world of Dart and Flutter. That's the goal here. Because again, I think Flutter, like the fact that Flutter can create those APIs means that fundamentally Flutter can be every bit as simple as processing it's just that when you build a typical application, a mobile app, a web app, you're doing different kinds of things than you are in processing. So if we can allow or facilitate instructors teaching with a Flutter version of processing, 
than other courses, courses that deal with traditional user interfaces, uh, courses in uh, human-computer interaction, digital art, and science, anything that goes towards more of the traditional development and computer science route can still benefit from the use of Dart and Flutter. And of course, Dart is a fine language for programming 101 if you want to use it for that purpose. But this begs the question, can processing be ported to Flutter? If we kind of go down the list, some things can definitely be ported. Some things at the moment, I think definitely can't or probably cannot. Let me tell you what I mean. First of all, painting all the 2D primitives should be pretty simple. Painting dots, circles, ovals, squares, rectangles, lines, arcs. Flutter, Flutter has a canvas that can do all these things. We just need to kind of rejigger the API so that it looks like the processing API. I think that's pretty much no problem. Then there are 3D primitives. What happens when you want to take the same dots, ovals, circles, squares, rectangles, lines, and arcs, and paint them in 3D, paint them with 3D perspective? For the most part, I think we can do that just using matrix transforms. I'm hoping that that's all it takes. It'll be a little more work, but should be very doable. And then there's animation over time. Processing is very big into painting frame by frame by frame so that you can animate things and move things. Primarily, this will just require a little bit of focus on structure. How do we, how do we uh, expose the processing APIs so that you can achieve motion and animations in these things? Again, shouldn't be a problem. We just need to put in a little bit of work. But the big problems, the big problems in processing are images, textures, and audio. Now, images, the issue there is that it's common in processing to load and to just either in a setup function or your draw function to just load an image. But loading an image is, is a, a time consuming asynchronous operation. Doing that in the middle of rendering, you know, Flutter has its rendering pipeline. It's not really made to do any long running operation in the middle of rendering. When we get to image loading and when we get to painting images in desired ways, painting literally directly painting pixels, we may actually need to rework things quite a bit. We may need to actually have two parallel pipelines, the regular flutter pipeline and then our own somewhat manually controlled pipeline so that we can do long running operations like loading images and so that we can control actual image pixels as needed. Textures are an even bigger problem. As far as I know, Flutter does not currently offer any way to truly paint a texture. We can access textures by their ID, but I don't think we can paint them. And really the way that you paint a texture is with a shader. Flutter definitely does not offer the ability within Dart to write shaders. There is a public proposal to do that. However, I don't know that anybody is working on it and I don't know that it's a priority. If Flutter can't paint textures, if Flutter does not provide the ability to code shaders, then I think we just can't do this. I think I, I, I won't be able to port texture control into Flutter, uh, well, from processing with Flutter. And that would definitely be a, a big downside. I think to really say that we've ported processing, I think it's got to have texture support. So this is a big question mark. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to find out. Uh, then there's audio. So Flutter has no real audio APIs, and that's on purpose. Flutter is a UI toolkit. Uh, it is not a, a sound engine. There are existing audio plugins. However, the last time I looked at those plugins, their API surface is pretty narrow. They seem to very much be intended for the kinds of sounds you would play in a mobile app. We may need much lower level, more generic APIs, and this means that it, we might have to create a completely custom audio plugin for processing, for the Flutter port of processing. And that means we have to implement the actual sound playback for Android, iOS, web, Mac, Linux, Windows. 
I don't even know how to do most of that, let alone have time to do it. So we'll have to see what we want to do about audio. Audio will probably be the last thing that I tackle. But that's kind of part of the fun as well, which is that I don't have all the answers. I don't know yet what I'm going to do uh, to implement all of this. I've just, I just know that I'm going to try. And I'm going to film myself trying to implement all this stuff. I'll create videos either per function or a video per related group of functions. And together we will go through this process. Now, if I had all the answers, if I knew exactly how to implement all of these things with Flutter, I would sit down, I would map it all out, and I would decide how I want everything structured. This is pretty rare in the real world, but when you are a master of certain things, when you know how everything is supposed to work, you can sit down and just decide how it's going to work. But I don't have all the answers here. Again, I think a number of these things, with the present state of Flutter, I won't be able to port them. Regardless, in a project where you don't have all the answers, the best thing you can do is to take a small piece of related functionality, implement it to the best of your ability, wrap it with tests, because so, you're going to get it to work, and then you want to make sure it keeps working. Wrap it with tests, then go on to the next bit of functionality. And as you approach or begin with new areas of functionality, you will probably realize that you made assumptions or decisions earlier that are totally incompatible with the new sets of functionality. And so you have to go refactor your earlier work. You have to go change the, the underlying structure so that you can build the new stuff. But you have your tests in there to make sure that when you do that, your old stuff doesn't break. That's probably what's going to happen here. We'll tackle an area of functionality. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'll, I'll show you the structural decisions that I make. You know, if, if I'm creating a widget, to control the processing UI, that's one approach. If I create a custom render object, that's another. Um, if I do something lower level at the canvas layer, that's something else. I mean, we'll go through all these decisions together and the decisions will change over time. We're going to discover new things that I didn't see coming and it's going to force me to redo decisions that I made earlier. And that's the real world of software engineering you will almost never know everything up front. You have to discover it as you go, and you have to be merciless in your uh, refactoring. As I build this, not only will, the, will there be videos, but the project will be public on GitHub, and I will also have the project, the package, available on PubDev, though I don't expect that it will be usable for quite some time. Now, you might be wondering how you can help. Well, remember, the goal here is to get Flutter into institutional education areas or education institutions. If you can find instructors that are willing to try this package in their courses, that would be great. That's what we're trying to accomplish. If you know any instructors, if you can find any instructors, if you can point any of those educators this way, then we can, uh, we can work towards accomplishing that final goal of actually getting Flutter into education and hopefully from there it kind of sprouts and takes off. If you can't do that, then maybe just try out the implementation, see if you can find bugs, file issues. Uh, if I screw anything up along the way, it'd be good to go back and get it corrected. So if you find bugs, that's helpful towards the long-term vision as well. Instructors probably won't use a broken package. Uh, so let's find the bugs, let's fix them. And lastly, uh, if you're interested in financially supporting this effort and related open source efforts, you can go to donate.superdeclarative.com. Any and all donations are greatly appreciated, and those just help help me invest more time in these kinds of things that don't otherwise generate any revenue. So this is one of my one of my big goals for the early part or maybe first half of 2021 is to port everything I can from processing to Flutter and to get the Flutter version of processing into educational institutions. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those down below. And uh, other than that, I will catch you as we begin the porting process. <laughs>